great accomplishments begin with a vision. A legacy is built on the accomplishments of those who came before us. The Christian University continues to build on that legacy. Momentum is contagious. The next level of excellence. The legacy continues. This morning, dear friends, brothers and sisters, is a day of happiness and gratitude as well as a day of reflection. Because for the past 30 years, our school, our leaders, peoples from many, many places had been praying and waiting and watching I don't know what other biblical word can I use beyond praying, waiting, and watching. Maybe another word I would like to add is, they murmured not. We have been praying, excited that for many years the Lord will bless us and give us an opportunity to train medical or missionary physicians for the work of the Lord, not just in our institutions, but also as they serve in various capacities, both in the government and private practice, to serve as missionaries of the Lord, as physicians. And the past three years had been basically very, very busy. Four years had been basically very, very busy for us. And the Lord has blessed our effort. This coming Monday, this coming Monday, the first class will begin uh, the, the inaugural class will begin their first class. Why are we establishing a medical school? I believe there are 40 medical schools in the Philippines. Is that correct? So if each one graduates 100 every year, 4,000. Do we need to get into the business of medical education because nobody else is doing it? Here's the next portion of my challenge to you. We are not in the business of education only. This College of Medicine is being established to be part of the healing ministry of the last days to produce medical missionaries to produce Christian medical missionaries, to extend the healing ministry of Jesus, the right hand of the gospel, to open the door for the gospel. Why is your world church? Why is the church that I love, the church that you love, focusing on comprehensive health ministry? 
It's because the world, as Ellen White said, has become a Lazar house, and the time has come, and this was a call in 1902, that every member of the church, not just the general conference, not just the division, not just the union, not just the conference, but every member should lay hold on the medical missionary work in these last days. Why? Because when medical missionary work is practiced, not only by the professionals, but by the members and by each of us, it appears as if Jesus has been among people because their needs are cared for. They are loved. Their problems are attended to. They are clothed. They are dressed. The second reason that we're engaged in comprehensive health ministry is that it's not merely a method, but that it is a mission a mission where she describes and states so clearly that the mission of the gospel and the mission of healing must never be separated. Number three, it's concerned as much with wellness as with the treatment of disease. And I'm so grateful that intrinsic in the core curriculum of this new college of medicine is going to be lifestyle. Part of the Adventist health message changing the hermeneutic or improving the hermeneutic of pharmacology and surgery and intervention to include, to be broader and have prevention right at its core. And then comprehensive health ministry is in for the long haul. We're here to do it, to do it well, and to make sure that it succeeds by God's grace. Uh, I guess the question for today is, or this afternoon, is how did I get involved? Personally, I have always been involved with AUP. Um, thank you. I was involved with the development or supporting the College of Dentistry in its inception. Um, during the planning of the College of Dentistry, the chair of the uh, approving committee of the CHED was my dean, previous dean at the University of the East, Dr. Lem. And at that time, I was told that they were not going to approve any College of Dentistry to be started in the Philippines. There was a moratorium. In fact, they were thinking of closing like three or four dental schools. I told Dr. Lim, I am a Seventh-day Adventist, and you know that. I went to UWE, and I'm proud to say, as uh, Dr. David said, I didn't go to school on the Sabbath. I missed some exams, but I passed my subject by God's help. And Dr. Lim knows that. And I personally guaranteed him, and I told him, the Adventist institutions develop the best schools in the world. So if you give a chance to AUP to open up a college of dentistry, I will guarantee you as a friend that it will be a school that will train the best dentists in the Philippines. Ten years later, what do we have? We have probably one, if not the best school College of Dentistry here in the country. Now, as I said earlier, how did I get involved with this? Personally, I have been involved in supporting AUP. How did I get involved with the College of Medicine? It was passed on to me. Being elected as the president of Westna for the next three years, this was passed on to me by Ms. Dr. Baginguito and Dr. Miguel. And without no doubt, can you imagine the three presidents of Westna being here? this afternoon. Is there any doubt in your mind of the support that a Westner will give to the Adventist University of the Philippines, not to mention the College of Medicine? I got a call from my dad back in March of this year about the inauguration, and he said that we were invited. I was very excited. In fact, I had started making plans that day. It's hard for me to get time off during the summertime, but I made sure I got time off to coincide with this event. About a month ago, my, my dad told me, oh, by the way, 
you have to give a five minute talk. Five minute talk, he knows how much I love public speaking. So my wife kept telling me, have you done your talk yet, done your talk yet? I go, I have the, I have the 16 hour flight to make up my talk. So on the plane, I couldn't sleep. I was so excited about this inauguration. We were, had a layover in Tokyo, and um, my wife struck up a conversation with this older Filipino lady. She was asking my wife what we were going to do in the Philippines. My wife told her, well, we're going to a medical school inauguration. She goes, a medical school inauguration? There's like a ton of medical schools in the Philippines. My heart just sank. I'm going, what are we doing building a medical school then if there's a ton of medical schools here in the Philippines? So when we got in, my plan was to just, you know, give my five minute talk and just kind of stay in the background and try to get out of as many events as possible. I came to the Vespers last night and listened you know, to the panel of people that were up there that as they gave their devotion on what this medical school means to them. And I was, as I was listening to Dr. Landis' sermon, I actually did listen to the sermon. I kind of got that feeling back again, a feeling back, that feeling of excitement again about this medical school. Yes, there's what, about 40 medical schools in the Philippines, but this is the only Adventist medical school, school in the Philippines. And I really do feel like that's really important. I graduated from Loma Linda, and they really taught me a lot about practicing medicine and how to make man whole. And that is really important in our education. So I'm back on the bandwagon. I'm back about being excited about this inauguration and being excited about this medical school opening up. And I believe in the next several years, not only is this gonna be the best medical school in the Philippines, but I think this is gonna be the best medical school in all of Asia. 2013, the DOST, Department of Science and Technology, right? In 2000, year 2000, 16%, 20% of men and women in this country were obese. In 2008, it jumped up to 28, 27%. In 1963, only 4.3% of Filipino kids, children, were obese. In 2007, 19.4% of Filipinos are obese. Bicol Standard in 2008 said, one out of every five adult Filipinos is a diabetic. In uh, 2007, Philippine Cardiovascular Outcome Study shows 20.6% of Filipino, adult Filipinos are diabetic. Whereas in, in 1999, only 1999, less than 10 years ago, eight, 10 years ago, only 3.9% of Filipinos were diabetic. Folk, this national crisis, disaster, is a golden opportunity for us, Seventh day Adventists, medical students, to make a difference. You should be able to be, you should be invited in FAU, Farisman University School of Medicine, to present the findings that veganism, vegetarianism makes a difference, that the Lord knew what he was saying when he told us what to eat before the fall, Genesis 1, 29. You, you, cannot, you cannot compete with the schools in this country to be the first or the board top notcher. If you do that, I really want to pull back. But you can be known all over the country, all over the country, as people who really, truly have the secret of healthy living. I um, consider this a true honor um, to be here. I wish I could have been at Loma Linda in 1909. They started the medical school. 
But I've had a chance to look at the history of Loma Linda and learn about how it started, and you've got a lot better head start than we did. Uh, you've got a lot of things in order, great faculty. Right now I'm looking at uh, 10 times the faculty Loma Linda had when it started. Um, respect them. I respect your teacher. And I'm going to look at the faculty and I'm going to tell them something my dad taught me a long time ago. He says, treat the students well. Because a few years from now, they will be your doctor. She wrote about it. She said the medical school at Loma Linda, and I put in parentheses AUP, because it applies exactly to you, is to be of the highest order. Because those who are in that school have the privilege of maintaining a living connection with the wisest of all physicians, Jesus Christ, from which there is communicated knowledge of a superior order. And Loma Linda's purpose then and is the same purpose as it is today, and that is to train excellent clinicians, teach whole person care, You've heard that word a number of times. Which means you're going to manage the patients, not only their physical and mental health, but you're going to also manage their spiritual needs. You'll fill a gap that other medical schools in North America, and this is for Loma Linda, leave empty. 145 medical schools in the United States. Only five are faith-based. Faith and we're the only one that has an overt message that will address the patient's spiritual needs. And our third goal is to provide extraordinary opportunities for missionary medical service. Now, if I just change that and put AUP, the purpose is the same. The only word I changed is Asia in place of North America. Our first class started in 1909, your first class, 2015. It was by 2011 we had graduated our 10th, our 10,000th graduate. I put a question mark, will 2111 be when you graduate your 10,000th graduate? You don't think it's possible, do you? But remember, who only knows when the second coming? Only God knows. We have over 1,000, I hope you can double that, who serve missionary service. So this is about you. This is about today. This is about the white coat and what it means. The first white coat ceremony. And I predicted about when I would be speaking, and I was close enough, but it was 49 hours ago that we had our white coat ceremony at Loma Linda. And the next is a video of the year before, the excitement they experienced on the first day of school for this incoming freshman class. With the same hope and dreams that you have, it is international. You all act alike. You all have the same aspirations. And it's all focused on service and the Lord. Remember, the white coat resembles trust. You need to earn it every day. It means confidence, learn from your patients, empathy, learn about yourself and how that can make you a better doctor, and hope. This will define you as an AUP doctor. Prayer, pray without ceasing. It is the pathway to hope, and you are fulfilling God's command to serve. That's what the Bible says. It's what you need to do, and never, never not be grateful for what you have. Thank you very much. That is why, my beloved brethren, Ladies and gentlemen, my faculty, the medical curriculum of this medical school is founded in the principle of integrating faith and learning. This means we offer the basic medical curriculum that every would-be physician should undergo. But over and above this, AUP COM curriculum includes courses such as Med R or Medicine, Humanity, and God for the 
healing not only of the body but also of the spirit, it has also incorporated in our preventive medicine course under Chair Tamano, the curriculum on lifestyle medicine based on biblical principles of health and wellness, which I would emphasize is evidence-based and proven by scientific studies. I am very proud to present to you 17 of the 18 members of our Pioneer Class 2019. I say 2019 because they all aim to graduate in 2019. There are certain interesting facts about this first batch of students that we have. These are the students who will be bringing in, bringing in what? Bringing in patients that are sick, not only physically, but otherwise, bringing in souls to the kingdom because they will be going out and they come from Korea, we have one foreign student, and various parts of the Philippines indicated by the red squares. Julian Rowley Aujero Sanchez, she hails from Caloocan. She finished her, a, her BSN with the honor of clinical excellence and magna cum laude. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give this first batch, our inaugural batch, a big round of applause. To lead out in the Christian Physician Oath, let us welcome Dr. Linda Varona. May I request our medical students to please raise your right hand and follow after me. The Physician's Oath. Before God, these things I do promise. In the acceptance of my sacred calling, I will dedicate my life to the furtherance of Jesus Christ's healing and teaching ministry. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. I will impart to those who follow me the knowledge and experience that I have gained. The wholeness of my patient will be my first consideration. Acting as a good steward of the resources of society, and of the talents granted me, I will endeavor to reflect God's mercy and compassion by caring for the lonely, the poor, the suffering and those who are dying. As you heard the experiences and have shared in what everyone has told you. I want you to remember that to become a physician, a blended ministry physician, a physician patterned after the pattern man, Jesus Christ, is the greatest privilege anyone can have. And you're going to deal and see and be part of people's joys, suffering, happiness, and their failures. I'll never forget a patient who was exsanguinating, bleeding to death. And I remembered that she and I, we were living out in a very rural area had the same blood group. And I said to the nurse, take blood and give it. We rushed her to the nearest center where there was a blood transfusion bank. She made it. 
She came to my office a week later. We looked at each other. Our eyes filled simultaneously with tears of joy and gladness. She said, thank you for giving your blood to save my life. And I could not let the opportunity to go by but say to her, someone else gave their blood to save your life so that you will live forever. That is the physician's privilege, joy, duty, and opportunity. And to that end, we dedicate you, this building, and this College of Medicine to God's service.